what's up everybody? It's Mercer here with week number 19 of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. Let's go ahead and get into it right now. It found this to be a fairly slow week of Pirates news other than the stopping of a 10 game losing slide which has effectively ended the Pirates hopes for division title. <laughs> went from being 7 games over 500 while leading the division to 6 games under 500 after a 5 and 18 stretch. Unfortunately for the Bucks, the Milwaukee Brewers went 18 and 5 over the same 23 game span and they're now 12 games ahead of the Pirates going into Sunday's game. The Pirates are the first team in history to go from 1st to 10 games back in a 2 week span, an epic collapse that many would say that only the Pirates could accomplish. So, if you're the Pittsburgh Pirates, what big announcement would you make in the midst of a 2 and 10 August? Frank Coonley announced this week that ticket prices for the 2012 season would increase. Anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. As you can imagine, with a team that's lost for 18 straight years, a few people might be a little miffed at the raise in prices. In a Tribune Review article, some guy named Michael Jackson explained their motive. He said, people are so excited about the team. The backlash will not really be strong because of the psychological factor of competition. Sure, that statement was fine about a month ago, but announcing the move right after a terrible slump may not have been the best move. Look, I don't deny that prices need to go up to increase payroll. All I'm asking is that the Pirates actually use the money on signing major league stars like Andrew McCutcheon and Neil Walker to longer term deals. The low risk dealings for veteran players Derek Lee and Ryan Ludwig haven't gone this plan so far for the Pirates. <laughs> no. Ryan Ludwig is doing relatively okay as he's hitting 282 and 39 at bats, although 11 of his 12 hits have been singles. Derek Lee, on the other hand, is doing his best Armando Rios impersonation. The Pirates' crack medical staff finally discovered that Lee broke a bone in his left hand while stopping his leg from being hit with an inside pitch. Take these broken wings and learn to fly again, learn to live so free. People are already talking about signing Lee for another year as the Pirates have a continual black hole of prospects at first base. It's amazing that having one good game can make people confident that a nearly 36 year old player could be the answer for the team. It's another example of how making a couple of signings of older players in free agency or on the trade market give misguided Pirates fans hope for the future. Oh, they cried before SLS. All the dealings made them horror and I barf. Now they buy when they're near even, but they lose and swerve as I'm hung from a scar. Every little thing we do with bug with. Of a thousand rainy trains and free tread fans. Like Pat Mears and Derek Bella, Morris and Minsky, Evon and Romy Red. Every little thing he does with blood, with everything they do won't help the cause. The saga of rehabbing players continued this week as Jose Tabata, Ross Ollendorf, and Alex Presley all remained at AAA Indianapolis this week. Doesn't it seem like these players have been rehabbing for about 17 years? 
Sure, everybody gets hurt, and some people heal more quickly than others, but I don't understand how giving them more time in AAA is gonna help them, considering the Pirates could really use their help. Anyone is better than Matt Diaz right now, and with some of the Pirates starters logging more innings than they ever have, it might be nice to have another starter to plug in once in a while. The signing deadline for drafted players is Monday at midnight, and there's still no news on the Garrett Cole or Josh Bell fronts. The Bucks have signed 21 of their drafted players for a total of over $2 million. That number would greatly increase if both Cole and Bell were to sign. As I said last week, there's no way the Pirates don't sign Cole, and I'm sure he'll get upwards of $8 million to sign. Speculation abounds that Josh Bell has already declined offers from the Pirates of anywhere from $3.6 to $5 million. I'm not advocating breaking the bank on Bell, but I think the Pirates could seriously consider making him a big time offer. If the scouts believe Bell is a true impact player, they need to do everything they can to bring him in. But we're never gonna survive. day, I still don't think Bell will sign here even with a hard slotting system coming up. He'd likely get the same money as a higher pick, and besides, who would want to pass up all the hot college chicks in Texas? Here comes a brief update on the miners, so cue up the ominous music. Lost Miners Update this week, AAA starter turned reliever Justin Wilson's fastball was clocked at 99 miles an hour on the gun during a relief appearance. If he keeps that up, he could become an extremely effective left-handed option for the Pirates' bullpen. So we can go out there and look on them lake and see if there's some duck out there. Well, we get up when Dawn make his first little crack and we go out there and look on that lake and she's black with duck. Whoo, I guarantee all over them lake. In AA Altoona, Starling Marte continues to impress with a 324 average and 847 OPS. The Pirates are taking Marte's development incrementally, and they don't seem to be in any hurry to promote him to AAA until next year. His 61% stolen base percentage is a bit concerning, and the Bucks will need his 5.25 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio to improve. Finally, people are starting to take note of State College's right fielder, West Freeman. Since the 20th of July, Freeman is hitting 390 with a 1.127 OPS. As is the case with Marte, Freeman's strikeout to walk ratio is pretty bad, but hopefully whatever adjustments he's made in getting more hits will translate into more patience at the plate. The Pirates traveled to San Francisco for a series with the world champion Giants. Luckily, the Pirates avoided ace pitchers Tim Lincecum and Matt Cain, which aided them in winning yet another road series this year. On Monday, the Pirates broke their 10-game losing streak with a 5-0 shutout. Charlie Morton pitched eight strong innings to improve to nine and six, and Garrett Jones sparked the offense with a four for five day. On Tuesday, the tables turned as the Bucks were shut out six to nothing. Madison Bumgarner struck out ten Pirates, and they only managed to get five hits on the day. On Wednesdays, the Pirates won nine to two, powered by Jeff Carson's six inning nine strikeout performance. Andrew McCutcheon had one of the craziest stat lines in history by going one for one with a home run, four runs scored, and two steals. It was then time to travel into Milwaukee for a series with the Milwaukee Brewers at Miller Park. Going into the series, the Pirates had lost 31 of their last 33 games in Milwaukee. <laughs> Do I even need to tell you what happened in this series? The Pirates lost both of the first two games. The first was a 7-2 loss, which saw Ryan Braun and Prince Fielder both hitting home runs, with Fielder subtly showing up the Pirates at every turn. On Saturday, the Bucks lost a frustrating 1-0 game. Random Brewers starter Marco Estrada gave up one hit in five innings, and the Bucks only managed three on the day. In the ninth inning, Xavier Paul hit a leadoff triple as Niger Morgan did his best Chad Hermanson impression. Sadly, Andrew McCutcheon and Matt Diaz both hit the first pitches they saw right into the drawn-in infield, and Neil Walker struck out, leaving the tying run stranded. I don't have time to give you Sunday's result, but at this point, it'd be a minor miracle if the Pirates actually won the game. What do I think about the Pirates this week? 
It was good to see Charlie Morton and Jeff Carson's have good outings this week, and it's nice to see the Pirates get somewhat back to normal in winning a road series against the Giants. But the Brewers continue to have the Pirates' number, and the divisional games are ones the Bucks can't afford to lose. It's more of the same next week, with the Pirates starting a 10-game homestand with three games against divisional foes St. Louis and Cincinnati. Well, that about does it for this week. I'm Greg Mercer. This week in Real Pirate. Later.